praise God forevermore. Please. Amen. Okay. <laughs> okay, praise God forevermore. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Thursday's edition, and we're talking about covenants, right? Yes. God, the covenant, and the contradiction. Now, July the 4th, 1776, was when they signed the Declaration of Independence. That's correct. Then they had to fight a war to keep it. And all of the grievances were in that declaration. The declaration, we declare we're independent. Mm -hmm. Now, what are you going to do about it? And here's why. All those grievances are why we're doing it. Yes. And they had, there was a soldier by the name of George Washington. And he came up well taught. He, he was, his parents were godly people. Mm -hmm. He was well taught. And he was taught that you don't lie about anything, ever. The day was April 30th, 1789. This was the day of making covenant with Almighty God for the United States of America. A proclamation was made for the sacred gathering. Uh, gathering at Federal Hall. Come and see your president take his oath and pray that God will accept this land as his. Now that was 234 years ago. In God's time, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Because to him, a day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day. That's, that's, Moses said that and Peter said that. At 9 a.m., the bells rang throughout the city. George Washington made his official oath of office in New York City. There wasn't any Washington, D.C. <clears throat> no. <laughs> That's right. That's a long time later. He laid his hand on the Bible, not just merely upon the Bible. He specifically opened it up and laid his hand upon the covenant God made with Abraham in the 17th chapter of Genesis. Then lifting his arm upward toward heaven, Washington made a vow to lead our nation and honor the God of Israel and his covenant. Now, what did God say to, to Abraham when he changed his name? Nations will come from thee. This one came from him. That's right. Abraham Lincoln He kept this nation together. Yes. And he stopped slavery in the world, not just in this country. Right. It was a huge industry all over the world. But when the United States stopped it, it all of a sudden just fell like dominoes all over the rest of the world. Heads of state were kicked out because of it right. after the war that was fought here. And Abraham Lincoln knew he was named after Abraham of old. And that he would one day do what he did. After Washington invoked his oath and covenant under the Lord and sealed it with so help me God, he bowed his knee to the ground in reverence and kissed the Bible. Afterward, Washington called the senators and newly elected officials to join him as they walked arm in arm down the streets of New York to St. Paul's Chapel. There they bowed together, prayed, and dedicated this land, our beloved America, to God. The day that George Washington was inaugurated was the day that covenant was invoked. America belonged to God Almighty. And St. Paul's Chapel in New York City it survived 9-11. That's right. Everything fell around it. The wounded and, the, and the, the injured were brought in there as a haven. That very chapel is where the first elected officials of this nation dedicated it to God. That's right. In a covenant of That's God. That's correct. Now, we had a contradiction to that promise, that covenant. 
The contradiction, Abraham Lincoln will take care of. The contradiction is slavery. Yeah. And Washington was one of the ones that insisted that you put in there that all men are created equal. That's correct. Now, expecting that to stop slavery, but it took a long time for it to happen. Now, he had slaves, Mm -hmm. but in his household, they were paid well. They were treated as family members, not as slaves. And there were a lot of people that would really would like to be in his household Mm -hmm. because of that. Mm -hmm. And then there were debenture slaves. Now, nobody ever talks about that. Mm -hmm. These are people that wanted to come into this country so badly that they would sell themselves to someone for so many years and work that out. That's correct. That's correct. Happened a lot. There are people down there on the border right now. This is the only nation I know anything about that there's nobody trying to get out of it unless you're running from the law. (laughs) Everybody in the world trying to get in. And well, you just think about them. I don't know how many people are trying to get into Australia or, or Canada, but you see where they are. They're on the border of this nation. I think it goes to that covenant. I do too. It goes all the way back there because the covenants were supposed to, and I, I want to point that out with, with the, the contradiction to, to what he said was slavery because it doesn't happen overnight. You, you start a direction. You make a, you make a commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to give your heart, your life to him. You've confessed him with your mouth. If you were overweight when you did that, you're still overweight. Now he's going to begin to work on the inside right. to change those things. Right. So, and, and as you learn to honor your covenant and honor him, he'll begin to change things in your life. Mm-hmm. Honor is a seed. Mm-hmm. I sow it. I can choose not to sow it. But when I sow it, adaptability happens. I begin to adapt to whatever is needed for a situation. Joseph shaved his beard and didn't look like a shepherd when he went into Pharaoh. Why? Pharaoh's, the Egyptians didn't like beards. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, Esther bathed herself in oil, prepared herself for the king. She adapted. Daniel adapted Mm -hmm. to the culture. He didn't didn't become the culture. Big difference. That's right. But he adapted to it in order to speak to Nebuchadnezzar and all. A, a man hanging on a cross next to Jesus, makes an, he, he loses an entire lifetime of failure and sin with one conversation That's right. because of who he honored. That's this right. day you'll be with me in paradise. Now his, the reward system didn't work with him because he just barely made it. Yes, he did, but he made it. But it's way ahead of the alternative. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> because the other two, yeah. now, the, the moment they went into hell, the moment they were there, then they saw all this other. They saw the one there in that upper region there and in the bosom of Abraham. Yeah. And they're down here burning. Mm -hmm. How do we know that? Because what Jesus talked about the rich man and Lazarus. Lazarus. That's correct. So imagine that thief walking in there to Abraham's bosom. And there's David. And there's Abraham. And all the people that prophesied this. And he walks in there with nothing. You know, he just got saved. Walks in there you know, people, what are you doing here? Well, the guy, the guy in the middle said I could be here. You know, and that, that's just it. What are you doing here? That's right. He said, I could, he said I could be here. But see, this all started with a sinless man, Adam and Eve, in the yeah. garden with God. They fellowshiped with him daily. I'm, let me read an excerpt, if I could, here out of page 41 on God, the covenant, the contradiction. It says this, filled with his glory, 
as his children. They had confidence both in the spiritual and natural realms. They also had direct access to heaven's throne of grace. We'll give several verse references there. All Adam and Eve had to do to keep living the dream was abide in the Eden covenant conditions of which they had agreed to. Those conditions included one restriction. Here it is. The Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden, thou mayest eat freely, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it for the day thou eat of it, thou shalt surely die. There was only one contradiction. There was only one thing that they weren't supposed to do. And Lucifer heard it, twisted God's own words to get them to dishonor, if you will. We have to honor our covenant. You're in a covenant whether you realize it or not. There's a covenant on this nation. She added to the restrictions. She, she added to. Yes, she did. We're not supposed to look at it or touch it. That's not what he said. That's not what he said. They had to touch it if they were going to tend to it. <laughs> she might I'm have been satisfied that that was their time. I can see that. I believe that. If, um, if they had obeyed it at, at a certain time, because Jesus knew good and evil and didn't commit it. That's right. But at a, at a time appropriate, he would have called them in. And uh, when that fruit was ripe, he would have called them in and said, now. Since you refuse to listen to that snake, I'm going to teach you the difference between good and evil. Mm -hmm. Or if Adam had owned up to it, but he blamed it on her. And he blamed, he blamed he God too. God. The one you gave me. Yeah. So here it is. Romans chapter four. Here is the covenant and the contradiction. This, this is in one or two verses here. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written... I have made thee a father of many nations before him or like unto him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things that be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about 100 years old. Now, there's the contradiction. That is. Yeah. But he did it by faith. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform it. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness, now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead who was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification. There's no way, impossible, for a 100-year-old man and a 90-year-old woman to have a baby when she's barren anyway. Mm -hmm. That's the contradiction. Mm -hmm. But it was a special child. Mm -hmm. Faith changed them both. Yeah. She accounted him faithful. You find that over in the 11th chapter of Hebrews. She accounted him faithful. Mm -hmm. She judged him. She sat there and she remembered all of this yeah. that happened. Um, you start looking at them and their covenant promise. 
with Abraham, it was a blessing. Just like Adam, he's, God started with a blessing again. Yeah. Right. And uh, you'll never walk in the blessing unless you understand covenant. I mean, you'll, you can understand blessing, you can understand covenant. But when you marry the two, that's what she did. Mm-hmm. She judged him faithful. The, in Genesis 12, 1 through uh, 3, get the allied country from thy kindreds, from thy father's house, and to the land I'll show thee. I'll make thee a great nation. I will bless thee. Make thy name great. Thou shalt be a blessing. I will bless them that bless thee and curse him, singular, that curseth thee, and that you all the nations of the earth shall bless. There's a lot of blessing in those words. Even the curse in the covenant of Abraham is actually a blessing. I'll curse the one that comes against you. Mm -hmm. There's no curse on you. See, the reason that can be is because it'll be Abraham's seed, Jesus, Mm -hmm. that will become the curse. Brother Copeland? So the curse is even a blessing Mm -hmm. in Abraham. Mm -hmm. Moses is a different matter. But, But in this covenant of Abraham, it's a blessing. He was the promised one that will deal, and he's the one that will become responsible for Abraham will become responsible for the seed coming into the earth. Now, there's another contradiction. Besides that one, it's Ishmael. Mm-hmm. He tried to do this by the flesh, or Sarah did. Yeah. And so now we have another contradiction because we have another seed there. And you look at, you look at her. It's the unexpected contradiction. She's dealing with being barren. She's looked down upon. Yes. And deeply concerned about the reputation of her husband. I mean, this is a a very, very prosperous man. And he's had covenant with God back before his name was changed. Mm Mm-hmm. And she's an embarrassment. Well, we're still suffering from what she did. Mm -hmm. But to give you an idea how powerful faith is, when Sarah died, Mm -hmm. Abraham remarried. Now, he he was dead at 100. Mm -hmm. He remarried and had six more sons. Now, here's what most people, yours truly included, until the the teaching of it from her name. Mm -hmm. Her name is an African name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So his six more sons were most likely, she's most likely a black woman. Yes. Mm-hmm. Isn't that just, isn't that just like God? Mm-hmm. That thrills me through and through. Because Moses will do the same thing. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And people got upset about it. And they, they paid for it. Contradiction, there was a natural contradiction. They were too old. Faith overcame that. They created their own contradiction with Ishmael. God overcame that. So this is why there's two fathers and two sons. So God's going to walk this thing through. I am the father of the promised seed. You're going to bring the natural seed. If you're Jewish, you're part of the natural covenant, whether you choose to be or not. If you're you're a believer in Christ Jesus, Galatians 3 tells you you're part of Abraham's seed. Mm -hmm. And you're now part of this covenant. You're a part of the covenant. Whether you ever choose to walk in the fullness of the blessing of it or not, that's up to you. Don't create your own contradictions by trying to work it out when he's already done it. He's given us all things that pertain to his righteousness. And now this is done by faith. My obedience is through my faith. So this is proof that Abraham is fully persuaded he's no longer trusting in flesh because he's willing to kill Isaac. No yes. longer trusting in flesh. That's right. I'm willing to kill Isaac because you'll raise him. So first it was the blood of animals, then it was Abraham's own blood, and then it became the blood of Isaac, which God stopped him. It'll become the blood of the seed of Isaac, which will be Jesus Christ himself. 
And that's the redeeming blood that has redeemed us once and for all into this glorious covenant that we, we get to walk in. That's why the blessing is so attached to covenant. Now, all of this, mm-hmm. once, you, once you've studied these things, all of it is in the 10th and the 11th and 12th chapters of the book of Hebrews. The priesthood, all of it, yep. all of it is there. Now, you have to remember The Apostle Paul spent an undetermined amount of time in the Arabian desert. He was caught up into the third heaven and there received things uh, unlawful for him to utter. In other words, he was not allowed to write it down or tell it to anybody. But then all of it is here God having provided some better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us and and let us run with patience the race that's set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher or developer of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider Here it him is. Here it that is. endured such contradiction, contradiction of sinners against himself. There it is. That's the whole book right there. And the Lord, <laughs> boy, he set me down. Yeah. Except I like to kill myself doing it. Mm-hmm. He said, you mistook the anointing for strength. Mm. Wow. Mm. And he said, the things would pass through your spirit Mm. and you'd stand out there on the platform and say, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. Mm. Glory to God. And he said, now you're stuck with it. Yes, that's right. Because you publicly announced it. That's correct. You didn't inquire of me when or where or if even if it was what. So I preached myself to exhaustion twice. And when I got short of breath, then they checked my heart. I didn't need a stent. I didn't have a blood problem. But I exhausted myself twice, and the stress of that on my heart kicked it into AFib. Mm. And here we are out of time. <sighs> And I don't do that anymore. <laughs> That's right. And I'm not going to get usher jackets either. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> God, I have so much to do and so much going on. Without you, I don't know how to get it all done. And I know what your word says, but I just feel so overwhelmed with so many things. Lord, what do I do to overcome these obstacles? I need an answer. Holy Spirit, show me. This is your covenant guaranteeing peace, healing, provision, spirit, soul, body, financial, and every area of life. Stop accepting a single contradiction to a blood ratified covenant. I am loved by God. I am anointed. I am called. I do have the might of Christ. I am made in his image. I am healed. And I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Order God the Covenant and the Contradiction book by Kenneth Copeland and Greg Stevens for only 19 pounds and 50 pence. Outside the UK, call for postage. Go to kcm.org.uk forward slash TV special or call 01-225-787-310. Father, we thank you this morning and we give you praise. And we thank you that this building once more for one whole week will be a sanctuary for people from all over the world. And we thank you today that this building is full of the Holy Ghost and power from on high. 
and we praise you and we honor you today and we pray these things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Take the word of faith wherever you go with the Believer's Voice of Victory magazine. Build your faith through powerful articles from Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and other guest authors. Read encouraging stories in testimonies of real life victory and equip your kids for spiritual growth in Commander Kelly's Corner. Download a digital copy for your tablet or mobile device. Sign up for your free monthly subscription or download your copy today on our KCM website. Now let me finish that story for those of you that don't know. They put in a pacemaker and, and now my flight physical, you know, is in danger. No, I had to go to corresponding action. <clears throat> and there is what they call a Bruce protocol. Hmm. And that is a stress test for the heart. They call it the granddaddy of all stress tests. Well, thanks to Keith and Phyllis Moore, because she had one, I really liked that treadmill. Well, then they bought me one. Mm. <laughs> so by the time it took, I had to pass the Bruce Protocol, I was working out at the Bruce Protocol. Mm. I mean, it was nine minutes, but, but it, of course, their old medical treadmill wasn't all that hot. <laughs> but, and now to make a long story short, my flight physical, is right here in my pocket right now. Amen. And I praise God for it. Yes. Amen. Amen. And you can do the same thing. If that's a situation where you don't just go sit down and die. Mm -hmm. be, a, be a witness. I mean, praise God. You get out and walk. Just get outside and walk. Anybody, here's what the cardiologists say. An hour's walk a day can add 20 years to your life. Yes. Mm -hmm. Get outside and walk. Just go walk together. A brisk, nice walk. Amen. Amen. But if you're buying behind, you know, like I was, get you a real good treadmill and start off with a little nothing. Just start nibbling in it off and do about 30, 32 minutes and then, and then uh, another 30 minutes. But what you need is a trainer. And what you need is a trainer that will feed you like you should be fed and get rid of all of that. I don't know. Well, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, yes. Amen. What I said. Until then, <laughs> remember this. God loves you. And we love you. And we only want the very best for you. To live in divine health. Yeah. Because Jesus is, is Lord. Lord. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Glory to God forevermore. Find out more about Kenneth Copeland Ministries and how we can help you grow in faith. Visit our website, kcm.org.uk.